everybody, and welcome to 372 Pages We'll Never Get Back. I am Connor Lestoka, joined here by Mike Nelson for our first post-Super Constitution episode. I don't know if you have a heavy heart like I do, or if you're delighted to be freed of those shackles and can now soar above the heavens to... uh, yeah, well, I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna pass the book on to a a needy reader, yes. someone who needs to learn about the super constitution. But it has been around my house, <laughs> and so it's been sitting there in a, a, a you know a, a place of honor, obviously. Sure. And people walk into my home and like, oh, what is this? Is this your current book that you're reading? I'm like, yeah, just crack it open, see what you think. <laughs> Universally, people the it, it, the response is wonderful. So it's it's a great thing to have around. I'm going to be sad to lose it, but I'm happy to pass it on to someone who who needs it. Yeah, I like that you're doing what the uh, your stereotypical you know, college freshman does with uh, infinite jest or art of war just conspicuously has it sitting around so people have to ask about it. I think I've I've told this story before that there was a teacher who I wanted to impress and I brought a giant copy of uh, a very difficult writer named Saul Bellow, a, a huge book, and I set it on my desk and he came by and he tapped the book like ironically with his finger like three times and then looked at me and raised an eyebrow and went good (laughs) and i was like oh um oh you saw that it was very he busted me so bad it was very embarrassing i actually carried it around i think i eventually read it but it wasn't at that point sure uh, well, I like the idea of passing the uh, super constitution around to like one of those little free libraries or something that seems like a, uh, a Stephen King story in the making or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just we, you know the you 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 read about someone who who you know shot a, a a prominent politician in ten years and you're like he was radicalized when he received a book from a public library called Super Constitution and you're like oh I put that there yes <laughs> it was the first domino. That was that actually came up yesterday. Well, it was Halloween yesterday, and there was a we had an old neighbor. Um, gosh, I almost said his name. I had to stop myself because his <laughs> name his name is part of it. It's kind of a funny, whimsical name, mm-hmm. but he was an old guy, an old, terrifying, scary guy, like very old, who would you know slump around the neighborhood, and you're like, oh my god, he's out, he's out of his murder house, oh, you know? home alone, shovel man. <clears throat> Um, not familiar with the movie, <laughs> but I'm going to, yeah, I know. Of course. I know. Yep. I know. Um, but he, on Halloween would suddenly put on some sort of, you know, scary hood costume, like in a scythe, you know, like death or something. And he would do a grave in his yard. Okay. And it, that was the only, and otherwise he would sort of creep around the neighborhood and go, get out of my yard, you know, that kind of stuff. And so I was just telling Bridget it was always the fact that if someone went to you, like the interviewer, like, well, your neighbor, he, you know, he obviously climbed a bell tower yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you would go, oh yeah, I always wondered when yep. he was going to do that. Yeah. It would not be the, oh, I'm so surprised. He what was a quiet so little long? man yeah. who kept to himself. Like <laughs> he was that, but he was terrifying mm-hmm. to me. So, <laughs> well, it's the fact that we're even discussing our, our former book, our last book, uh, in these terms, that it could inspire a future John Wilkes Booth type of guy is uh, is a sign that you know maybe we needed to switch yeah. things up for this next one. Yes, I think that was a good sign, especially as we approach the you know the the seasons of of, of lights and Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all these just you know sort of cozy times that we're about to be spending indoors as the, the, the clocks change over next week, uh, uh. much to the chagrin of. You know, that, that's going to send you up into a bell tower now. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, th- we thought we would, you know, go back to a, a more wholesome, uh, cozy type of series here. I mean, it is the season for putting on overly thick sweaters, mm-hmm. um, curling our legs up into a rocking chair made from those, what are the, what's that, bent furniture, you know? Oh, yeah, cane-backed. Cane-backed, um, on a porch with our legs curled up close, eating yogurt from the wrong side of a spoon. <laughs> that, well, that sort of went off the rails. I was thinking just, you know, the, the, the mist of the cocoa wafting up into your face as you... Uh, you, you have your cocoa, I'll have my uh, yogurt from the back of a spoon. I mean, <laughs> we, we... A little cold. 
world. It's we do bit. our cozy in different ways. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we need our Yankee candles going full blast. We need the, uh, you know, to uh, play Mariah Carey's Christmas song to the to the yes. point of, of our ears bleeding as we sort of dance around decorating our trees. Yeah, we're, we're wearing uh, gingham. We have, of course, I don't know what your cartoon uh, slippers are. Mm-hmm. Um, mine are uh, Snoopy, giant Snoopy things. I can barely get through a doorway with my Snoopy slippers on. <laughs> uh, and then on the bottom, they say, I love Hallmark movies. Yes. Uh, so when I'm putting my feet up and eating yogurt from the wrong side <laughs> of a spoon. My slippers, my slippers are actually, I, I wore them this weekend. They are uh, bare feet. Because mm-hmm. for Halloween, I dressed up. This is how committed I am to this lifestyle for the next two months. I dressed up as the Celestial Seasonings Sleepy Time Tea Bear, who you know yes. I've long aspired to his lifestyle of sort of happily nodding off in front of a roaring fire with my big pot of Sleepy Time Tea next to me. So I got the full nightshirt, uh, sleeping cap, you know, like the dad yeah. in the night before Christmas, and yeah. uh, and so I now have bear paw slippers that I can do this in front of the in front of the fire with so I'm, I'm sure they're the most flammable substance in the world so one rogue spark will probably put an end to that pretty quickly and and what was my guess when you showed me that you sent me the pictures this is our halloween costumes mm-hmm. it was with your with your wife lauren yes she was an arizona iced tea can so we were on theme uh, what did you say i don't even remember i i thought it was just an initial guess in a small photo the, so please the bear from super circus or something berenstain bears oh just, sure yes i thought you were pop, you know in one of those like there's you know nighttime books was i think there was a sleeping cap in berenstain bears. oh i'm sure yeah they lived a cozy lifestyle they lived in a tree for god's sake yes that's, you know yeah. that's it's very cozy though i don't know if you can have a fire there the bo- the point being here is that we're <laughs> <laughs> the, the, we're, we're going back to the cozy mystery well. Yes, I don't think anyone missed that. Yes. <laughs> but the, see, the thing is, when we, we decided to do that, you know, just because, you know, the, as the end of your approaches, we don't want anything too long. We certainly don't want anything uh, uh, with, you know, the octopus being mentioned in here. Um, but there's just so many of these out there, as we discussed before when we read the quilters push back, that it just even deciding which one to do was its own sort of gauntlet here. Um, and we spent uh, like 45 minutes on the phone or on you know Skype trying to figure out what this was going to be, just going through a list of... Because you type Christmas cozy mystery into Amazon and you're just like, your your computer like grinds to a halt like it's trying to render a, an 8K video or something. Yeah, it's just a, a an absolute fire hose of this stuff, which <laughs> was, you know, obviously I think you heard it. If you listened to our first one is that we were... I mean, obviously, I'm aware of the genre, and but I just did not know that this is yeah. this is bigger than anything I could have ever imagined. Yes, it's like when you when you hear about a, a series that you've never watched before on Netflix, and it's uh, um, or you know, like I think yesterday we were talking. Tim Allen had a sitcom that ran for I looked it up, and because uh, we were talking about Wild Hogs, the movie, yeah, I looked it up, and he had a, he had a sitcom that ran for the past decade on one of these channels that just obviously we've never watched. And don't know anyone who's watched it, and it was uh, just printing billions of dollars. Um, so it's sort of like that when you tuck into this corner of Amazon. Yeah, it's like uh, I think I brought it up before, but when Mad Men was on, and they were on the cover of pretty much every magazine, and there were think pieces and mm-hmm. lots of stuff Costume about Mad- parties. Yes, yeah, someone themed restaurants. Someone wrote a short article that I read that said, uh, you know, like Mad Men gets like one tenth of the viewers that. The lowest rated procedural on CBS gets, you know, like NCIS Fargo or what, you know, whatever yes. the hell it is, like gets, it just buries Mad Men <laughs> and uh, no one ever write, you don't think about it. You Obviously you don't watch it. You don't know anyone that watches it, but uh, millions more watching it. And that's what the cozy verse is to me. Obviously I'm not, uh, I'm not reading them normally. So right. I'm, the, I'm uh, I clicked on one article about Cormac McCarthy's new books, and I've since been inundated with recommendations to read more about it. And but uh, the the amount of people who are who are celebrating that are just far just a, a drop in the bucket compared to the people who have read uh, the first um, series on our list of ones we considered but aren't doing, which was the Poppy Pacelli's Pizzeria series. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so this was a set uh, a cozy mystery series that's set in a a local. Um, I think uh, New England pizzeria. 
Mm-hmm. And there are 48 books in this series. <laughs> they are. Uh, and th- this one I just wanted to, to do based on the cover alone, because every single one of them has a lot of these cozy mysteries have a fairly generic. Speaking of Mad Men, there was like a, a Mad Men create your own Mad Men image website when yeah, that was on. Yes, and these sort sure. of look like that. They're like a 60s stylized uh, skinny women, like very fashionable, um, and a lot of cozy mysteries have them on their cover. But this is one of those women holding a, a plate with a slice of pizza, but then above it is your very stereotypical uh, pizza box Italian chef going like Mamma Mia and holding up the number of the book series on it. So they had Christmas pizza murder, a jingle of murder, they had Thanksgiving pizza murder, and these just, if you're doing 48 books about pizza murders, you're you're getting into like uh, uh, New Haven style clam pizza murder that type. So they they've, <laughs> they've stretched themselves thin, but uh, it seemed very intriguing. But they were a little. A lot of these are too short to really devote a lot of time to. But I'm considering doing some some one off bonus episodes about some of these. But th- this one is when you sent this to me. Obviously, the image is quite striking, and people should <laughs> should look it up. Because the red and green will like hurt your eyes. I'm colorblind and it's, it hurts my eyes. Uh, but but it has four distinct quadrants. Papa Pacelli's Pizzeria series. Okay, I know what I'm in for. And then you got the like, yeah, the the pizza box guy. And then Christmas pizza murder in a font that you know insults every human who's ever lived. <laughs> and then the the slice of pizza. And then a tasty culinary cozy mystery exclamation point <laughs> like i'm exhausted already like yes. what am i getting myself into patty benning hugely you know 36 point type summer prescott books yeah that's a, that's that adds some intrigue to it i don't know if that's her own vanity label um but it you know or if that's the um protagonist who solves these mysteries it doesn't appear to be the case but uh it could be a tribute to her dearly departed sister she used to write the books with who knows it, it, but it's um, – and then the back of the book is – looks like a thing from the 70s, um, you know, like when you pick out something from the junior high library that you had to read. <laughs> yes. And it says, how about a heaping helping of murder? It's Christmas in Kittyport and Eleonora Pacelli is – all right. And then I, yes. I won't go on. We got a lot of this to get through. Yeah. But, but, it but is it's a, a really good start. And it's just an example of like uh, – you know, Lauren suggested that what we would do is essentially – uh, solicit you know Mad Lib cozy mysteries from our listeners where it was sure. like all yeah. right you know what what is the what does the protagonist do uh, they run a pizza shop and and what you know what is their pet a cat does it talk no uh at, you know what town do they live in you know cozy New England town or are they like a brassy old broad solving mysteries down in like you know Fort Lauderdale or something like that mm-hmm. you know Naples in Naples Florida and so you could you could assemble these and that's how far they have they have parsed these genres that you can you can essentially do that like what do they do oh they they're on a cruise ship as a magician and they solve the mysteries because people keep getting murdered on the cruise ship and that's how i mean if you look at a cozy mystery and the author is not claiming to be a usa today bestseller just like absolute hack garbage right it's got to be garbage because somehow like you know you can be like oh i'm the usa today best-selling author in the you know Cozy mystery slash New England slash pizza parlor slash not talking cat genre. And so there you go. And my immediate thought was, and, and this is probably already hack because this is how big this thing is, is there has to be a series where cozy mystery authors get together for a convention and then someone <laughs> dies. <laughs> oh, because, my God. Because they were, ta- yep. you're taking the pizza? You're doing the pizza series? That is my turf. You know, yeah. threats are hurled and then the person shows up dead and oh, like you we, you threatened them at we've got to cut this out of here if you you just might have burnt a uh <laughs> might have burnt the next 48 book series okay meta fiction <laughs> yes uh <laughs> but i assume that that's already a well-established genre that is already cliche so i, I apologize for even bringing it up but. oh man i don't know i that, i mean I, this is the first time hearing about this if you've been keeping that to yourself that's 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 got yeah. some potential all right well but let's let, write it right after we're done with this yeah sure yeah we'll, we'll have it out by the time this posts okay <laughs> uh but you know you keep going down this list and you you, you get some ones that have great titles but like you, you 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 can never tell. It was hard to pick. It was t- tyranny of choice here because we had not a creature was purring, <laughs> a pause in claws mystery, 
Uh, we had Candy Canes, Canines and Crimes, A Christmas Cozy Mystery, A Dickens and Christie's Mystery, Book 8. That one <laughs> used the words doggo in the, in, the ty- in the description of the book. So that was very, you know, you know, their doggo goes missing. Um, very that, that, intriguing. That one is so long, the, the uh, uh, title, that it reminds me of, you know, I think I sent you something the other day when I was buying a uh, replacement battery for my PS3. <laughs> yes. And it was one of those, you know, like obviously a Chinese seller where they just, I don't know why that works to just populate the title of the thing with as many words as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. And it was called like, a pickle power batteries eight zero zero seven three five replacement yeah. for PS three works out of the box with in charge. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's the title of the Drake's thing. fortune is somehow in the title of this. It's <laughs> but that that is this candy canes canines and crime colon a Christmas cozy mystery parentheses a Dickens and Christie mystery book eight close parentheses. And, and the cover, I mean, this, so that was written by Kathy Monos Penn, which is also intriguing to read a book with Monos in the author's name. Yeah. But then they, they essentially did the what they did with the title, but with clip art pictures of dogs on the cover of it. Because there are <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six dogs that obviously were never in a room together with each other, all different species. And then there's a cat as well um, next to the authors. That, yeah, uh, the cat is under the uh, the, the lens, too. The magnifying so, glass. The magnifying yeah. glass lens. So, so this is quite quite good. Um, there's a, a series of books that were sounded fantastic, but they were all like, you know, 60 pages long, so not really suitable. But I'm, I'm going to read one of them. They're all written by uh, Riley Blake who uh, writes books set in sort of the, like, the bayou of Louisiana. So you mm-hmm. had Santa got run over by a gator. <laughs> uh, and a lot of these are even, like, not even out. There's just a whole uh, micro-genre of people who pre-sell these books, and they come out, you know, uh, throughout uh, November, even up to, like, uh, t- you know, 1222, they have books coming out. But yeah, you- but, but uh, my suspicion on that is you put it out, and test the water and then you either write it or don't write <laughs> sure it, yes right exactly. based on what based you on pre-sales how many hits. yeah yeah it's like a kickstarter almost yes uh, but she also wrote uh christmas in the bayou miss fortune world louisiana christmas cozy book number one and Bradley blake seems to have some odd ideas of what constitutes cozy i'm just going to read you this description and you know you can take from it what you will from trimming trees to snow on the ground uh, the town is called Sinful. Sinful residents will celebrate a Christmas to remember. That is until small town Louisiana makes national headlines thanks to a school shooting that it oh, seems. God. Oh, God. <laughs> and there's like no, this thing. There's Riley. A, there's a friendly librarian trimming a Christmas tree next to the book cart and a little uh, schnappy gator on the... Uh, on the cover with her and she doesn't she she doesn't stop there christmas presents a cozy retirement mystery book five and this is the uh this is the book that has like you know uh three different golden girls on the cover that solve um solve uh, mysteries around the retirement home yeah when several children lose their parents due to an alleged freak accident, Mary Louise Pearl and Opal offer to stay with the family until after Christmas, and the book uh, makes big uh, a big claim of holiday recipes included. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one that I was very attracted to, but uh, yeah. it's that, it's so short. I, I'll probably read that one. Um, then you have uh, Christmas Catastrophe, a holiday pet sleuth mystery which uh, has the tagline, it's beginning to look a lot like arson. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's a a cat cafe burns down and they have to uh, figure out who did it. Sure. What uh, what do we have next? Um, Oh, yeah, you have a fa-la-la-la-la-la-la-llama, a Friendship Harbor Mysteries book. So a a llama farm uh, has a a out-of-town... Choir vocalist is found dead. That one was also too short, but it's also very intriguing. <laughs> that one made me. I mean, I, you know, Hallmark doesn't even. I, I'm sure their whiteboard is hilarious, right? Sure, or they're just like Title everyone first, is the movie yes second. the 
the uh, production crews assemble and then they just pass out the cards. Ooh, what do we get? You know, what do we get to film? Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> if someone passed them Fala La La Llama, they would go like, all right. <laughs> that's true. We do have some llamas in the area. Yeah. I guess that's fair. Okay. I yeah. think we know who can star in this. Jody uh, Sweeten doesn't work with llamas anymore after that one bitter <laughs> on the set of, uh, you know, Deck the Halls with Bows of Llamas. Um. Cameron Candice Bure. Is that her name? Cameron Candice Bure. Candice Cameron, yeah. Yes. I'll do it. I work with llamas. Okay. Uh, the next one. Oh, Christmas in the Bayou. That's the same. Is that Riley? Yeah, that was Riley. To her, okay. Bri- yeah. Uh, and she did Christmas, Christmas presents. Cat-tripping. Oh, oh, this is the thing. This is what I wanted to ask you is um, you said at the beginning, like, how do you make, you know, an octopus cozy? Sure. And I was like, well, I don't know. You know, the gator woman, she's doing the cozy gators down in the bayou. <laughs> but this was the one that, you know, you, you slap your head. It's the face palm when you hadn't thought of it. Mm-hmm. Have yourself a fudgy little Christmas. <laughs> a candy-coated mystery. That's the one where you're like, oh, of course there's a whole fudge genre. Why didn't I? Ugh. Yep. So that's that one drove me crazy like i should have already written 10 of those of course <laughs> that's by nancy coco and uh it takes place in a, a mackinac island fudge shop and mackinac island is a cozy place in general it doesn't have i went there as like a 10 year old it has uh only bikes you can't have any cars on the island right right and her uh, fudgy little christmas has just a thomas kincaid painting there's a guy in a old-timey like handsome cab sleigh outside there's a there's a dog and then a cat curled up by a fire. It just uh, also has um, mouth watering recipes inside too. But um, what are the odds that anyone? Because the photos look because they're not they don't look that fake. The photos look kind of real, even though the the people themselves look sort of cozy in the in the mm-hmm. photo. Nobody's looking like. Um, you know, Sebastian Younger, like, I just came off the battlefield. And, you know, everyone looks very happy and well Coco Defoe filled. in the lighthouse, yeah. Right, right. But, um, but what are the odds that that's their actual... I mean, obviously, Nancy Coco is not a name. Yeah. But well, is there anyone who just, like, uh, your name is, you know, yeah. Mrs. Witherington Ham. You should probably write cozy <laughs> mysteries. Right, yeah. I Because they are. They're all, they're all, you know, Gertrude and... Uh, we have one coming up that's Mildred Abbott type of thing. So I, I don't know why they think that is what's going to sell people on it. But yeah, I guess if your um, if your if your name was something that didn't really fit the genre, like <laughs> it might it might put readers off. Yeah, but the, the, so Nancy Coco USA Today best selling author Nancy Coco enjoys a good mystery, and there's a photo of her. Mm-hmm. Someone is going to recognize and go. Oh, hey, Nancy Przinsky. What yes, I see that you're sure. going is Nancy Coco, and you're using the same photo that I comment on on Facebook. And yeah, whatever. it comes up at a partner's retreat for her law firm or something. Right, like, hey, please. <laughs> uh, but the, uh, the the next one was Claws for Alarm. So, of course, there's a set of Christmas cozy mysteries that actually literally involve Santa Claus or Mrs. Claus. Um, that one didn't seem like anyone got... Uh, murdered in it so i think we got to have a murder um, yeah that was sort of yeah. baseline because you need dead bodies because that's what makes these genres so funny is the disconnect between you know uh running a fudge shop and then you know finding <laughs> finding a dead body you know decapitated in the alley behind the back with you know right. its nipples placed on his eyes or something oh, like God. that. <laughs> I, it was it occurred to me just for half a second that I mean, you could have claws for alarm and it'd be a cat mystery too, right? Sure. Oh, a yeah. Cat That's... Christmas thing. So okay. I, I wonder if there's another book called Claws for Alarm. And, you know, those authors, I would love to see their emails you back and forth. I wonder whether there's another book called Claws for <laughs> Alarm. There are four books called Claws for Alarm <laughs> A Cat Cafe Mystery, a Mrs. Murphy Mystery, a Gray Whale Inn Mystery, and a Nick and Nora Mystery. Nick and Nora? <laughs> the Thin Man? I, I, I guess so. Wow. Okay. By T.C. Tempio. That's an interesting pen name. Anyway. Oh. Uh, the next one is uh, was the one by Mildred Abbott, which was Traitorous Toys, the Cozy Corgi Mysteries. But, you know, I, I always put these in here hoping that you're going to take the bait. And it's always like, well, obviously we're not doing <laughs> that one. <laughs> so that is a dead man. Um I don't know, though. As I told you, 
I, there is a, a corgi in my family. My my son, my son has a corgi, right. which is going to be in my home for <laughs> Thanksgiving when he comes. Wow! So the photos coming out of it may yield a corgi mystery series. I don't think you can patent, you know, or I don't think you can copyright titles. So sorry, but I'm coming for you, cozy corgis. Nice. Yeah. Do you have a fireplace? Yes. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, will, I will get ahead of it. The author that we did pick has also written a, cor- a corgi mystery. So if it's successful, oh, okay. we'll go. Um, right. okay. uh, the, the next one was also just, you know, spin the genre wheel where a, a vampire and a witch solve a cozy mystery. Oh, it just happens to be an Oregon setting of uh, Twilight. Oh, How about Twilight. That? Yeah. Uh, Murder isn't Mary. That's not a very good title, but that one didn't even come out until the end of November. So uh, it wasn't even considered. <laughs> uh next one is very good yeah. um the the title i think i think they get points for um i think the title sort of mixes up the genre a little bit okay this is from the amish quilt shop mystery <laughs> this is book number three if you own them all you can look up to your shelf right now and nod stroke your chin and go yes let me pull that down and you will be pulling down of course murder served simply <laughs> See, because it's Amish, they're kind yeah, of the yeah. simple lifestyle. So just a simple murder, <laughs> no buttons. Those are too proud. Yes, uh, exactly. So. The murder goes away for Rumspringa and comes back with a you know <laughs> bone through their nose. Uh, but that's that one was intriguing to me because we would have had the uh, the chance to do all the uh, the screaming like Harrison Ford and Witness. Yeah, there's that, and there was obviously there was quilting. So that what was the the long arm machine or whatever? Oh yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's what it was called, the long arm. That uh, that the husband was able to run. He he knew how to run that. Yeah, it was, it was mentioned in past. Yes. yes, right. Gabe, I think. Um, Gabe. But yeah, that one that one sounded really good. But just I think it was a little long. It was like pushing four hundred pages. Which come on. Uh, the the next one was this is I mean. Amish quilt shop, you could have eventually come up with that. This next genre of cozy mystery, I don't think anyone would have been in their top 200 list. The Happy Christmas Caper, an action-packed, humorous Beatles cozy mystery. <laughs> how how did they get, uh, how did they get away with this? Uh, that's a very good question unless this uh, gentleman has unbeknownst to us all obtained the incredibly lucrative Beatles licensing rights. He's uh, might just be doing this as an unauthorized, unauthorized series. But yeah, I think someone someone is dead at a uh, at a Beatles Christmas show in 1964. Is there a, a version of uh, you know running and gunning where you don't you know you shoot a movie <laughs> without ever getting a license? I guess there's a version of it. You just like I'm just gonna put this out. Um, my name is obviously a nom de plume, so no one will ever know who I am, and I'm gonna use Beatles lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to sell as many as I can until Amazon takes it down. Yeah, I suppose. Suckers, I'm out of here. I mean, I if you there's like DVDs that are like you know this documentary about Elvis does not contain any Elvis music unlicensed like type of <laughs> so it could right. it could just be that maybe you're just uh, alluding to them and you're never actually I mean yeah, but maybe. if you're not if you're doing a Beatles cozy mystery without doing like um, murder is all you need or like. Uh, murder fields forever. Like you know, if you're not doing that, you've really missed the point. Oh, d- maybe that gets around it. Maybe that's the parody part. Like, look, I used the lyrics, but it's obviously a parody. Yes, I suppose. I and but he spelled, you know, but it is the Beatles spelled the same way the Beatles spelled it. Maybe so. he does our legal dodge, and just every other page just includes like parody satire in the uh, <laughs> yes. in the lyrics. I do not hold the copyright to this music. <laughs> right, no I copyright mean- intended. Right. Uh, on to the next one, which is this one. I, I, I guess I'll have to click on. Uh, this is from the Corsario Cove Cozy Mystery series. <laughs> this is number one in the book. So again, just look up to your shelf on the left or right, and you'll find the uh, Corsario Cove it's mystery section began. that you own. And you'll see that it goes down 40 volumes. Well, go to number one, Cowabunga Christmas. <laughs> Uh, and this one intrigued us because of the uh, the author's bio. Yeah, incredible stuff. It was written by um, Anna Celeste Burke, and she's got sort of a Dwight David Thrashian uh, author photo that looks like it was a you know a, a, a mugshot. Or her her friend said like, "Oh, I can take your passport photo. Let's just go out into the uh, fluorescent lit hallway of my apartment building and do it." But her her bio is incredible. Life is an extravaganza. 
figuring out how to hang tough and make the most of the wild ride is the challenge. On my way to Oahu to join the rock musician and high school dropout I had married in Tijuana, I was nabbed as a runaway. (laughs) Eventually, the police let me go, but the rock band broke up. Our next stop, Disney World, where we trained to be chefs. (laughs) More education landed us in academia at The Ohio State University. For decades, I researched, wrote, and spoke about a number of gloriously nerdy topics. Right now, retired now, I'm still married to the same sweet guy and live near him in Palm Springs, California. And uh, so that was, yeah, you, you figure that someone with that uh, that type of background is probably going to have some interesting authorial choices. But you, uh, <clears throat> you inadvertently made her slightly more interesting. You said she lives near him in Palm Springs. She oh, li- damn it. She lives with him near <laughs> oh, Palm <God>. Springs. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be a good, wait a minute, there's another <laughs> twist to this whole story. But uh, so here's... I had a couple questions about this. Yeah. On my way to Oahu. Okay. How old are you to join a rock musician in high school dropout? It's probably post high school. Probably. But you'd married in Tijuana. You were nabbed as a runaway. Okay. That's good. That's good. You know, headline grabbing stuff. Eventually the police let me go. <laughs> what, how, what are we talking here? Yeah. Maybe but, she was a uh, a major like Supreme Court uh, uh, unlawful detainment right to a speedy trial case or something. But I, but was was it in Tijuana? So therefore, she was like in you know is it uh, the Turkish prison story you know, where she's just <laughs> uh, you know a bucket and a and a prison cell yeah uh, four by four. It's informed the rest of her worldview. Eventually, the police let me go, but the rock band broke up. So was it the like, oh man, our lead singer is still in jail? <laughs> yeah, he really, uh, he really isn't able to to hit those high notes after his his wife has been in that Tijuana prison for eight months. And then Disney World. <laughs> yeah. So was she talking about that as like the uh, when she was running the line at the you know Norway restaurant in Epcot Center, being like, "Come on, we need those open face sandwiches out," you know. God. Yeah, man. So You'll she, never cut it in a Mexican prison if you can't do this. <laughs> so when Anthony Bourdain's book came out, she was like, "Oh, gar- garbage! I got, a, I got an actual story. You want to hear? <laughs> you did heroin? <laughs> Who cares? They made me do heroin, <laughs> and I was Part a teenager. Of, I was being reeducated with heroin. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we didn't, we didn't pick that one. No, um, there was another one. You know, mistletoe murder and small town scoundrels. Um, that was a, 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 a living nativity scene, but a, a shepherd was found murdered with a, uh, a shepherd's crook in his back. <laughs> um, that's, that's a little on the nose, but I do like it. Yeah. It's, it's and, and that, that was the other one where it's like, do people know what, what people are looking for in these, in these cozy mysteries? It says the only evidence points to the victim's battered wife with nothing else to go on. The sheriff makes the arrest, leaving the woman's little boy homeless. It's like, <laughs> Just put the corgi in front of the fire and write the book, okay? <laughs> we don't need any. We don't need school shootings and orphans. <laughs> um, uh, next one rejected was, as we said, the good names: a Myrtle Clover Christmas, <laughs> and that's book twenty-one that we passed over there. So. Yeah, uh, that was a uh, that was a sassy octogenarians one. Sure, um, seemed really good. Uh, the next one was Overboard at Christmas, an Olivia Morgan cruise ship mystery. This was very intriguing because it's about. You know, on a cruise ship, obviously, but it was written by a woman who served as like the magician's assistant lady um, on a cruise ship for a decade. Like she yeah. lived the life and then got off the ship and decided to write books about it. She has her own, you know, pet parrot. So that's uh, the, the author and the, the character in this book does, too. So that seems pretty intriguing. Um, I wonder if that's the same woman who was on her way to join the rock band and they're like, <laughs> they kidnapped her and made her go on a cruise ship for 10 years. <laughs> Please helicopter me off or can I jump off at a port? Nope. You're chained to the uh, rabbit table. Sorry. Yeah. They, they will never tell her what happened to the last magician's assistant, but she starts piecing together things from the, uh, you know, messages scrawled inside the, the equipment shed or something. I mean, does... A uh, cruise ship immediately seemed cozy to you. I, I think of, you know, uh, pandemics and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. overflowing toilets and being trapped. and uh, Right. Or just like red-faced guys, you know, trying to get you to have your first, uh, you know, drink at 1030 in the morning. <laughs> this guy doesn't like to party. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> like, it is, I, I'm still having my breakfast. Like, 
<laughs> Have a margarita. Oh, okay. Sorry, man. I guess he's a pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Not super cozy at all. Right. Uh, and then the Lex one, this one was one that I just thought was really intriguing. But, I, you know, in terms of the coziness, I'm not sure. But it comes out, it came out today, I believe. It was A Totally 80s Christmas. Uh, <laughs> book four in the Totally 80s Mystery Books. So this is, I mean, the, the you know, it sort of is a Ready Player One cozy mystery, it appears. 1985, a right. uh, character named Marty. <laughs> right. Um, and the the cover is very... Um, you know, Trapper Keeper Neon type of thing, the synth wave. Um, and so everyone in the other books talks about how they just love all the references and stuff. So very intriguing. But um, I don't know. It it's it, it seems like if we're going to do a, a Christmas cozy mystery, we need to, to get one that is, you know, sort of the pinnacle of the genre. None of this weird uh, genre blending kind of stuff. Yeah, and she, I don't, I think her... Name does not earn the coziness. D.A. Wilkerson. Oh, wow. Yeah. You don't get to be cozy. Yeah. Um, that It just doesn't It doesn't strike cozy to me. And in the photo of her, she's, she, I mean, she looks fine. She's, you know, be glassed and she's smiling. But it doesn't look cozy. She has like a little bit of satire, a little wink of like, ha-ha. Yeah. We're going to get on our, uh, we're going to get our references on. Like, nope, <laughs> yeah, you haven't right. earned your coziness. <laughs> Unless the D in DA stands for Dowager, I think that's probably not, <laughs> yes. not going to work. But that's, you know, it's one to keep in our back pocket. Um, sure. Because yeah. I'm, I'm very intrigued by it. If you read us, let us know if it's worth our time. But that brings us to the book we actually picked as we approach the 40-minute mark of this. Right. Um, so you can you can mark that in the notes. That's sure. Your that's actual great. book comes at 36. <laughs> we haven't got one of those in a while. Um but yeah, if you're going to do the cozy mystery set in Christmas time, you got to pick one that just is like, you know, snorting a line of pure, uncut Christmas coziness. <laughs> and I think the one we found is very much um, what we what we were looking for. Um, you want to do the the reveal here? Uh, yeah, it's. I, I think when I say what series it's in, no, l- l- I'm just going to read the whole thing. Sure. <laughs> Murder. Yes. In Christmas River, a Christmas cozy mystery. <laughs> this is book one of the series. Yes. Book one of the uh, Christmas River cozy series written by Meg Muldoon, which as you as you criticize the last author's author photo, Meg Muldoon is not messing around here. She's not messing around at all. I don't know if this is actually her, but whoever's clip art they chose on brand. You got the red checked like vermont overcoat jacket Mm -hmm. it is currently snowing (laughs) she looks she's absolutely delighted that it's snowing and it's not cold enough to wear a hat she looks lovely Mm -hmm. and she's carrying a snowball that i assume she's about to throw at a delightful man that she had a meet cute with the year before 100 percent and he has he has his own cocoa recipe that he's <laughs> he's got simmering on the in the crock pot back at home and uh right. it's amazing he left his the high profile job to murder uh, to move to christmas river where he um you know still manages to consult on the law firm but with very reasonable hours um plenty of time left for baking and stuff and speaking of baking uh the christmas river cozy books which feature a gingerbread man being stabbed um <laughs> You know, right through his stomach on the uh, on the books. He's doing the Mr. Bill Oh No face, too. Uh, these books star a woman named Cinnamon Peters, <laughs> <laughs> who, runs a, who runs a pie shop in Christmas River. But what is she described as? Cr- Cinnamon Peters, who runs a pie shop, is one tough cookie. <laughs> All right. <Yes. laughs> Come on. And so this one appears to be, um, I, I, the other books, you know, Escalate Mayhem in Christmas River, Madness in Christmas River, Malice in Christmas River, Mischief in Christmas River, up to the upcoming Malarkey in Christmas River. <laughs> so that might be reaching the end of the line here if, if we're, del- <laughs> we're delving into Malarkey. <laughs> I don't know. The thesaurus page is open. I, I probably should see. Oh, God, there's going to be three more. Oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah, so there's a, uh, there's a big uh, gingerbread house baking competition. Which I guess she is, you know, suited to probably, you know, kick the shit out of people as a professional pie baker. But a dead body is discovered in the woods behind her pie shop um, uh, days before that. So that probably casts a pall over the proceedings, I'm guessing. 
Yeah, and we we talked about uh, what book of hers to do as as you mentioned before. It had to be like forty five minutes before we came to this, but yes, this one has an actual physical book copy because she has a her most popular one is which one i don't know it was book 10 um book 10 yes it was a uh meltdown in christmas river right okay which also that, features a a um i think pie competition and murder um some of the yes. oh that's yeah that that one features the death of the town gossip which seemed intriguing but yeah no uh only your first couple books have print editions maybe they are just on not as lucrative i'm guessing um, my, my wait a theory- minute. Wait, wait. I, I just have to call her out on something here. She uh, she wrote Corgi Mysteries, of course. Yes. Corgi's in Conspiracy, and <laughs> she wrote The Bulldogs and Bullets. But I, d- I don't think that I saw when we were looking it over. Pyrenees and Poison, <laughs> a dog town USA cozy mystery. That's your go-to that third dog? A, that's cheating on the dog genre, isn't it? I've never heard. Maybe she's like, look, someone is already... You know, I can't get a leg up in bulldogs. Well, I believe I tried she, in corgis. I believe she does have two Great Pyrenees dogs. Um, just by reading her author bio, yeah, she has two Great Pyrenees. So that's a little little personal preference, right? A personal wait, privilege wait, coming wait, into the series. You believe that she has those dogs? <laughs> you don't believe she has a cattle dog named Huckleberry? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to see i think no i went to her instagram i think i saw a picture of one of the pyrenees dogs it looked very cozy you just you know you could you know bury both your hands in its fur sure okay but yeah that number 10 book had like 1800 reviews uh this book has 585 um so she's killing it in the cozy game um uh, so i think that this is a a good choice for like what the sort of peak of the genre is uh, for what it's worth, way back in the day when we did the uh, we did a mystery science theater book, oh, wow. and the photo because we were, it was the whole staff was writing it was I said we should all wear a giant sweater and have a dog on our lap in a cane back chair and lick yogurt off the back of a spoon. Well, we had no yogurt, but <laughs> but Kevin had a dog, and so we all posed with his dog on our lap, like separately for each separate photo. The photos didn't turn out that well, so I don't think people generally got the joke. Oh, but wow. I thought it was a good because <laughs> we would just go like, "Here's the sweater. Here's t- it's time for your photo." And like now, put the dog in your lap. And, nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe she uh, maybe she rents out Huckleberry for um, other people's that's, coziness. That's what I'm, I'm suspecting that. Yes. Um, and there's also a audio book of the, uh, of this book. So if anyone opts to, to listen to that, I'd be curious to see how it would translate, um, to coziness. If there's just a really, um, you know, reassuring voice reading you this tale, that'd be nice to hear. Oh, wait, who reads it? Randy K. Um, is he one of those just, I'm just going to do it. I got an afternoon, so I'm going to, uh. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, it, or do you have to pay for that? Version? I'm sure you have to pay for it. Um, there's probably a, I mean, that's its own genre, I guess. Cozy audiobooks. Oh, why aren't we in that? Why are we? Why are we doing this? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. This woman kills it. Undoubtedly <laughs> kills it in this game. That's the- her. I think we pointed out that her. So her book got her biggest rated one at fourteen hundred ratings or whatever. Eighteen. You know, Eighteen hundred. All right. Um, and you know, four point four stars or four point seven, whatever. Yeah. Um, we've both written books. I think I have maybe forty people who yeah, reviewed the, my book, and <laughs> uh, so I don't know how this works. Obviously, there's some sort of log rolling going on because there's probably eighteen hundred cozy mystery writers just you know prowling around Amazon at any given time. Yeah, so they're probably just like, ah, if I rate you, you rate me. That's how it works, you know. What, however, this works. But it is fascinating. How- it is. It's a. It's. I assume it's a bit of a Ponzi scheme to some degree, where like people at the top of the pyramid, like Meg Muldoon, people have to come to her and kiss the ring, and then she'll, you know, <laughs> post about it or review theirs or something. But I think everything else is just um, people. You know, a lot of reviews that start with "I was provided a free copy of this book in order to provide my honest opinion." Um, so I think yeah, that's they- the hustle. I think you write the book in an afternoon, and then you spend the you know six months trying to get uh, trying to get it in front of people. She's sitting by a crackling fire, and she's in the aforementioned cane back chair, and uh, she, you know, scratches the underside of her chin with the backside of her fingernails. You come to me, telling me you want to write me a a corgi mystery. <laughs> she's stroking her Pyrenees. <laughs> why? Why should I uh, give you any kind of review at all? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I've got a really good 
original idea for a uh, cozy series that's set in a New England pizza parlor. <laughs> uh, I know the person who wrote the pizza thing. <laughs> Get this uh, piece of shit out of yeah. here. <laughs> you, you'd better leave right now. <laughs> My conciliary will show you out. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, that's that's. I think that's the right choice here. Is that there's uh, undoubtedly all sorts of other weird niche ones that you know have cool stories about being in Tijuana prisons. But I think this is uh, this is what you got to do. You know, you don't want to listen to um, you know an, an eight year old saying, "All I want for Christmas is you" at the talent show. You got to listen to the Queen do it. Yeah, I think we yes. If you if you're going to kill the king, you'd better succeed. We are going right to the king. She is <laughs> She is atop the well, I don't know if she is atop. That'll be interesting to find out as we read this, but she certainly seems to be a player in this yeah. uh, industry and she has uh in book 1, she did not try anything. She didn't go stray over the line. She's she's right down the middle. She yeah. is she is bullseye for everything. Yeah. Pie they, shop, tough cookie, Meg Muldoon, snow. It, it's amazing. I think she has the, you know, when you go into a pitch meeting and, you know, who, she already has uh, the pictures of uh, Danica and Mikkel are in here as Cinnamon Peters. Like, she's just like, <laughs> this is who I envision here. Uh, she's She's got her eyes set on on those riches, I'm sure. Like, you know, Hallmark, you can, you know, you can cough up for a uh, the whole series at once is is what I want. Yeah, I think I read once that maybe I hope I'm not slandering the wrong person. This is not a slander, but like like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's parody. It's yeah, parody satire. Uh, a J.J. Abrams type or something, you know, brings a script in and reads it. And the uh, you know how you know the rules of script writing. You're not supposed to put in things like all of a sudden, bam, a explosion. You know, you're, you're not supposed to talk like you're you're a three-year-old but he did that and put it in a script <laughs> and the uh the execs were like wow this is refreshing oh my god like this it really paints a picture all of a sudden bam the door gets kicked in and here he comes in he's like boo -doo, boo -doo, boo -doo. <laughs> he would just write stuff like that and people are like oh well you don't you shouldn't do it but jj abrams can get away with it or right. whoever well he's got a famous him. father so let's let him do it <laughs> yes um yeah, I, I, I assume that, that she has her, her eyes set on that. So I think maybe we've hitched our horse to a, a train that we'll soon be able to watch an adaptation of a, a 372 movie. That'd be great. That would be, I think my I would just end my life then, probably. <laughs> You'd move to Christmas River. We can make that a euphemism. I'd carotene myself. No, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. A carotene Christmas. Well, on that note, we should probably let people start reading. Um, we'll post a uh, assignment in the text of this, but it's uh, you know it's about a slightly longer than the Quilters push back, so it's got that that sweet spot that we can wrap it up uh, just in time for actual Christmas, just in time for people to move on to Malarkey and Christmas River if they want to. But I asked, I asked Bridget, w will this be the first time you read a book? Oh wow. Um, that you know we're going to be doing for the podcast because she never has and she oh. said she said an intriguing eh, maybe <laughs> so so folks if you are on the fence huh wow give us a, give us a good eh, maybe she's got to do it then we can have bridget's corner we can give her uh five minutes every episode sure okay <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thank you for reading. Thank you for supporting this, everybody. I, I'm going to read one of those batty old lady from Nolan's uh, books and report back on that. Uh, Mike, maybe you can cover fa la 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 ma or something. Yeah, I was thinking either that or have yourself a fudgy little Christmas. <laughs> we'll, we'll cover it either way. 669 anyway. ratings. Yeah. 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 Okay. All, All right. right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Talk to you next time. <laughs>